It's Sunday morning on CBS, and here again is Charles Kuralt. Amor y soledad, now love and loneliness. Painters paint and sculptors sculpt in layers, building up or paring away, which is also the way we live our lives. The topmost layer is what we allow others to see. Underneath are all the other layers which make us what we are. Only in art do even the deepest layers show. This is a story David Browning sent us from Los Angeles. There is a Los Angeles not far from the movie studios in Beverly Hills that's as far away from them as the moon in many ways. East Los Angeles, where the radio plays the old songs of amor y soledad, love and loneliness, and where many of the poor people of Los Angeles live, Mexican Americans mostly, it is the biggest Hispanic barrio outside Mexico City. It is poor, but for years it has teemed with art. Folk art, sidewalk art, and art as vivid and melodramatic as the Latin soul itself. For years it flourished, as ethnic art does, without much help or encouragement from the mainstream art world. But now, with movie makers and politicians and advertisers starting to pay attention to the Hispanic culture of the Southwest, it is art whose time has come round at last. Emiliano Zapata, and this is a response to Diego Rivera's painting. Uh, he painted uh, Emiliano in a white horse. And of course the story is um, that he actually rode a black horse. It's still a Christ figure, and one side is good, which is the hoe and farming, the other side is the rifle, which is evil. There is Frank Romero, who makes yeah, art of whatever is at hand. He paints. I keep designing little shapes and making these pieces. He carves uh, uh, the heart, but it, it turned into the devil inside. He makes freeway murals. In L.A., uh, I do everything on wheels, so we really get involved in, in the car culture. This is Lonia Sebastiana, and it's death uh, uh, coming to collect your soul. In the Southwest, in the penitentiary religion, it's done in a little cart. And I've updated it. I put them in a car. This will be painted black. So it'll be the hearse, the death car. And it's to collect your souls. Uh, so I'm doing totems in the sense of the urban totems. And it's kind of fun. Christmas tree car. We, we still go down to the railroad yards in LA here and buy our tree. Uh, a symbol that I used in the Olympics, uh, with, which is the heart to uh, just sort of love, love of, of the, the uh, expression of the automobile as sort of a freedom. The, um, the idea of us being in motion and traveling is important and it has of course a linkage to the car. But more important, I see us in being in social transition. So I put little cars on the feet. There is Gilbert Lujan, called Magoo by his friends because of his Mr. Magoo squint whose workshop is a fantastic world of plants and of animals far more devilish than they first look. The whimsy of the work shouldn't make people think that it's not serious. This guy has devilish intent. That's why the red face. But I'm going to paint him so that he looks like he's really looking innocent to her. And although she's interested, she's pretending not to be to him. So in this way, I say that the viewer must begin to look at these things a little more carefully because there's this subtle, subtle uh, dynamics that's taking place between these two dancers. I went to a high school that probably had the highest dropout rate in the nation when I was going there and I was part of the statistics. And the only thing I ever wanted to do was 
artwork. So, uh, and there is Gronk. The name means to fly in Brazilian. He grew up dirt poor in East Los Angeles, but saw in art a vision and a way out. Uh, I was able to create new worlds for myself by, by drawing, and then I'm still doing that. For instance, I have a show called Grand Hotel. One of the first images in the show is called Front, and that's one of the first uh, images a person that uh, enters into a Grand Hotel sees is a hand coming down onto a bell. That leads into a lobby. A recurring image is a chandelier. Uh, I use that throughout the piece. In fact, I have a painting that has, uh, that's called House Dick, and all it is is a huge big eyeball, but reflected in the eyeball is my back, which is a bellhop and a chandelier right above me. It's almost a poor man's vision of a lot of uh, that. I'm, I'm an outside observer. I'm the bellhop that walks from room to room. The outsider, the Latino artists of Los Angeles, know the role well. So, when a big traveling show of Hispanic art, organized by the Museum of Fine Arts Houston, came to the Los Angeles County Museum of Art, Gronk and Magoo and Romero found it more than a little ironic. Many of the works in the show were theirs, on display at last in their own backyard. The last time the Los Angeles Museum had put on a major display of Hispanic art, was 15 years ago. Here we've been here all along, and we're being discovered again. And it's not bad, it's nice to be discovered, but we are unhappy about being excluded economically and politically, and I hope that the art that I make begins to advance on changing that. The centerpiece of the show, Magoo's 1950 Chevy, a tribute to the lowrider, the Hispanic hot rodder. We're talking about the interrelationship of, of cultures here. We have a Detroit car, and we Mexicanize it, and moved it into the cultural palace of Los Angeles. To me, that's political. I'm hoping that I don't just have to enter through the door that says for Hispanics only, that I'm able to show in shows beyond this particular exhibition as well. And I think most of the artists in the show would probably share that view as well that they're not just uh, labeled into a certain niche, but that, first of all, they're artists and uh, want to see, be a part of what is American art, what is American culture as well. <laughs> I, I don't know what I'm doing. They don't like the sound. But I'm trying to make this copper panel green. <laughs> It's sort of an Eastern idea of just sort of a contemplative thing that you, you deal with it every day just for a few minutes. And, uh, I find that I can't do preliminary drawings, so I have to do it as I go. So this is the hard part. <laughs> And by way of farewell, let Frank Romero demonstrate the old adage that art is where you find it. It's materials, whatever is at hand.